Jeff, I make a big mistake. You slip your mind, okay? We'd like to welcome everybody to our budget meeting. And uh, since it's raining and the roof don't leak, we're all in good shape. Uh, we'd like to welcome Mr. Meredith here and Miss Copeland and everybody, just everybody. Uh, let's just all take a part in it and we'll all enjoy it. So at this time, we'll uh, uh, go right to our cash and fund balance report. Mr. Holbrook, if you would start us off, please. Mayor, I'd like to make an announcement first. Come on, Mr. She has some good news. Yeah. So I thought we'd start the budget committee off well with some good news. Um, the governor has put into his budget uh, $100 million for cities and counties across the state to use for infrastructure. So Anderson County will be receiving $546,551. And these, um, this money can be spent on one-time expenses for either IT hardware upgrades, capital maintenance, utility system upgrades, road projects, or public safety. So I thought I'd share that with everyone and then also use the opportunity to plug <laughs> an idea uh, since we're doing the capital maintenance with the ESG project and we've not gone to market yet, something you might consider would be maybe reducing that borrowing by 400000 That would save you an additional... You've already got it spent. Well, no. <laughs> but you're, you're already doing that, and that would, sa that would turn the 400000 into 600000 and then you could leave the other 146551 for some other project. Um, and just for instance, like I was just doing a quick eye eyeball math and typed in... I didn't go through line by line for ESG, but... The courthouse upgrades are about 1.5 million. Jolly building is the majority, which is like 2.9. Jail, 1.8. DARC, about 750. Then we've got some security here in the courthouse in the 200 range. And then you've got, you know, little pockets here and there for the health department or EMS. But maybe you do a road project since, um, you know, that's not covered in any of that capital improvement. But that was just an idea. Um, but I did want to share that with you to, to know that money's going to be coming. So. And that's a sure thing. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and the cities are all, uh, the cities are, I think their payment, I've already forgotten the number. Ours, every county gets a base payment of 250000 and then the remaining funds are based on the population of the county. So that's how it's allocated. I, th I want to say I think every municipality is 15,000 and then theirs is based on population as well. But I may be misremembering that. Well, sound like you've got a good plan. I appreciate that. Absolutely. And, and uh, budget members, if you'll, uh, if you'll notice, uh, item 17 is uh, the mayor addressing the senior center. And then we've got Mr. Meredith here that wants to speak about the senior building. I'll leave it up to you guys. Do you want to, uh, uh, since Mr. Meredith is a businessman, do y'all want to move that up? Do y'all want to put it first? Do you want to leave it where it's at? Or what's the pleasure of the board? And maybe him and the mayor should speak together. I don't know. Move it up. Move it up to where? First thing? First thing. <clears throat> Would you make that a motion for me? I move that we move <coughs> the presentation by Ron Meredith and the mayor up to our first item. Got a motion? Second. Got a motion and a second. Any of this, any, all in favor? Uh, any opposed? Motion carries. Mayor, since you are number 17 on our list and Mr. Meredith is, a, uh, is our guest, we would... If y'all would, uh, maybe y'all could work together and not overlap. Or, okay. Uh, would Mr. Meredith would that be? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Well, then come up and tell us who you are, and, uh, and we'll get this started. Okay. Hi, I'm Ron Meredith, uh, 520 Mariner Point Drive. I'm here, uh, two hats today. Um, one of them for our 501C3 partners, Anderson County Seniors. I just kind of want to tell you guys a little bit about it and what we do. 
It's pretty quick, easy, and in a nutshell, this, this nonprofit organization was formed to do nothing more than simply help our seniors. We don't borrow money, we don't buy buildings, we don't do anything except whatever we're asked of, whether it be serving food or whether it be fundraising, which we're doing right now. So I, I wanted to bring that forward because there have been some, not really confusion, but questions as to what role a 501c3 would play. Uh, an additional role that it brings to the table is the uh, ability to ask for some grants, loans, participation in programs that we, as just the senior center, or as a county a government uh, branch, we're not able to ask for. Like um, some of the local television stations, uh, they do what they call grants, where they will give cards away, money away, whatever. And, but you have to be a 501c3 to ask for it. So this gives us the opportunity to go out and to ask for additional funds from organizations that give them. So I just, does anybody have any questions about the 501c3 and anything else that we do? But that's it, pretty much line to line. To line. Any questions? Proceed. Okay. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to ask as Ron Meredith, the citizen, uh, is uh, for a recommendation from this committee to purchase 96 Mariner Point Drive. Um, and I've talked to a few of you, and I've talked to a few commissioners to try and find out ahead of time what some of the issues were so that if there was a remedy, maybe we could find a remedy, or if there were issues that you couldn't overcome, maybe we quit beating a dead horse and move on to something different uh, in search of answers. At, at the moment, in speaking to, um, I spoke to Commissioner Meredith, and he has had a number of folks call him that seem to be worried about the traffic and that just might not want it there. And so I reached out after I spoke to the city to, uh, or spoke to Rick, to the city, and we have had no fatalities at Mariner Point entrance and three wrecks, or excuse me, five wrecks. I want to confirm that I'm telling you the truth. But. So I, I don't think the traffic would be as big of a problem as some might worry that it would be. Um, three wrecks, no fatalities. Um, <clears throat> so I, I just wanted you guys to know that because that is a concern. I live there. I've lived there for 13 years. I've never seen an accident there, um, at, at least not a two-car accident. I've seen people run off the road and stuff like that, but I've not seen an accident accident. So I wanted to bring that to you for your consideration because if what we're worried about or what our subdivision neighborhood folks are talking about is the traffic. I don't, I don't see that problem. Also, the church, I spoke to them today as well. Um, in their Sunday service, they would, have, they would average 250 people in the sanctuary, not counting in the offices, for those of you all that got to tour it, in the offices that lay around it. So you're probably looking at over 300 people at a pop. And they had services two, two or three times a week at least. Sometimes two, two or three on Sunday, and then they would, they went to having two services on Sunday, and I think two services on Wednesday evening, or they had two groups on Wednesday evening when they had their youth groups. So I don't think we're going to have 250 cars there at one time as a senior center. So not wanting the increased flow of traffic, that's in fact it'd probably be less than the church was producing. So. I mean, and that's facts from the city and that's facts from the church, both of which have been brought up as possible uh, roadblocks for it. The one thing, you know, it is two point, it's 2.1 miles further from the current uh, center. And uh, there's nothing we can do to overcome that, but it's 2.1 miles. And so uh, people have worried about seniors having to drive there they drive to where we are now, and if you guys have ever been in that general vicinity when school's out and cars are lined up, coming out the other side, going down toward the one stop and turning in there, it's bumper to, I mean, it's as dangerous there as it is anywhere in the city. And they've done pretty well about navigating through that thus far. I don't know that we've had any accidents at where we are. So uh, are seniors at greater risk to have accidents? Maybe, I don't, I didn't pull any statistics on that. but. So far, we've got a pretty good record where we are, and it's a, the traffic flow is slower, but it is just as congested. 
Also, too, one thing that uh, I worried about, as all of you know, um, 205 Main and then selling it for less than we paid for it for is going to put a, you know, that's not, that's not a good thing, no matter where you are, what you are. Um, I think Commissioner Isbell and as the operations, the head of operations, or chairman, and the mayor met with the folks at Rusty Wallace. And if, if our commission chose to sell that to them, if they bid this time, and if they followed through with the bid, they said that would be $300,000. We would be losing $300,000. If their figures are factual that they quoted to them, and I'm sure they could produce that, we would make that money back in a, in a short number of years in sales tax revenue. And whatever, whatever upgrades, they said they were going to take the front offices off and bring that building back up to brand new. I mean, they were going to restore it in full. And you saw what they did with the Carm building, so we know if they're, they can make an old building look good. If they did that, and they hub all nine of their dealerships in there, like right now, if they have a car in Morristown with a dented fender, it comes to Clinton to their body shop. They have one body shop, services all nine dealerships. This will be the same thing with parts. If they did that and did five to seven million dollars a year in revenue, you can figure what the you know 9.75 percent sales tax, how much we keep, the city keeps. The great majority of what would come to the county would be for our schools, but it would it would it would save commission from having to fund them any further if that money went to the schools and they had a bigger budget. So with that said, <clears throat> I don't think you can link them together necessarily, but if you purchased 96 Bank at Mariner Point and you sold this and you used the money from the sales tax revenue to offset our losses, I, th I think the general public would be okay with that. I mean, everybody screws up, we all do and this was a mess, but this is an opportunity to fix that. And if you buy this other property, your equity position, it's, I pulled it today, it's actually 1,080,000 some odd dollars that it's on, on the books for uh, value. Also, you'd put 205 Main back on the books, not just as generate, it wouldn't just generate sales cash, but sales tax, it would be generating property tax. So it'd go back to a private owner. Uh, Something that not, not necessarily has been an issue, but it is an issue, is trying to fund it. And I, as of today, just in the increase from the 129 rule, in two months, we have put $417,724.08 in our coffers that we didn't allot for in our budget. Four hundred and seventeen thousand seven hundred and twenty-four additional dollars. That's a, in addition to what we we are that much more. We are that much ahead of November and December this year, 2019, than we were in 2018. And that's from the money that just we've collected off internet partners, internet providers that do more than a half million dollars worth of business in our county. If you're doing $50,000 a year business in the county over the internet, it's not taxed. But if you're up there at the half million dollar rate, it's taxed. So that's, that's coming off Amazon, eBay, Wayfair. We'll lot you three minutes. You've, you've done use 15. <laughs> How about, uh, uh, as politely as I can, uh, wrap, wrap it up. Would you please? I will. And I don't mean to be rude. Well, you're not, you're not being rude. I just want to, I've, I've heard a lot of things from commissioners that they need questions answered. And I've spent a long time answering your questions. So I'm gonna, I've tried to do it. You've got $417,000 in additional sales tax revenue right now in the bank that wasn't budgeted. You've got $2.7 million better off this year in property tax than we were last year. Representative Reagan on my radio station is applying for a two, he, he said this on the air, he's applying for $250,000, it's not a grant, it's called a budget amendment. It will turn into a grant, it makes way for a grant. Both he and Lieutenant Governor McNally support it, and he said he felt very confident he could get it, and he, he named off a number of grants that he had gotten, including the $1.2 million for the rowing in Oak Ridge. And he said, he, not a soothsayer, but he, his exact words were, I'm better at this than most, and this is a fair, reasonable ask and need. And then he provided a letter. So I, I think I've addressed any, 
I, I think in very short time, and I've got a lot more, but I think I've addressed the concerns that have been brought forth publicly. And so I ask, would this committee consider recommending to the commission to purchase that building? And maybe along with that, if you've already decided to sell 205 Main, and I think you've put stipulations on it to see what it was going to be used for so that you can make a more educated decision. Uh, that's my ask. Okay. Stand right there and, let them, and you work with the mayor on her. Well, I think the mayor's all funding, isn't it? I, I'm not sure exactly what I'll, but, I, but that. Would well, stay handy in case we Okay. I'll be handy. I'll be right here. Oh, wait, wait. Hold on. All right. So you made some very valid points. And uh, I appreciate you bringing this information. For me, right now, before we move forward, I would like to do a couple of things. One of those would be sell or not sell 205 Main. I know that they don't go hand in hand. I, I understand. I wasn't here. I didn't buy the building. But at the end of the day, we're all saddled with, with that cost. And I guess my concern is that we've tried to sell it twice and we've not sold it. For whatever reason, the commission has decided not to sell for the price. Uh, we've had a higher price offer than $300,000. Um, and, and I'm just concerned about having that building and this one and, and, and the debt that comes along with it. The second thing is um, I, I would like to see the the uh, the grant that you're speaking of, I'd like to see that uh, paperwork from the state, something showing that we're going to get that, because that will make a big difference. I don't think that we have, we can produce anything that says we're going to get it. They can't even ask until March. Right. Well, so. I just I just don't want to be counting on something that that we don't get. That's one of the reasons I brought the additional sales tax and property tax to y'all's right. attention, too. But, but, I mean, the sales tax, you know, the, the school gets the majority of that, like you said. And if, if we give the school $400,000, they don't turn around and give us 400000 back from to put back in the general fund. It just, it just it's in, in excess to what they have. So um, it, it just concerns me with getting the cart before the horse. I, we've taken this long. I just want to make sure that we, we do the right thing. I, I, do, I don't want the seniors to have to be up here in this building for another two years, but I sure don't want to buy another building and for whatever reason it not work out. Um, can, I, can I answer some, some sure. part of that? One yeah. thing, too, uh, to consider, we do have, we have had buyers. Some of the ones that you're speaking of that were a little higher, they kind of backed up, backed out. It'd be okay if we don't accept it. Um, and then we chose not to sell it the last time. The same person that bid last time is going to bid this time. In fact, they offered and have done, I think, put forth their own money to go have it inspected for environmental issues, like they were worried about oil because it used to be a, a mechanic shop. They wanted to make sure they wouldn't have any mechanic issues. The, the bad part about that is they're going to make the same bid that they made, the $300,000 bid, but they will bid that. But we will make that up uh, in sales tax over years. How many years will depend on sales. But, and then it, then it will be a plus plus from then on out. And it, you can, you gotta look at the company and look at the history. I think that has a lot to do with it. They have nine dealerships, they're growing, they're a very financially solvent co company. So the, chant, the fact that they come in, start, and then close their doors after we've quote, given them a tiff, better speaking, uh, it seems minimal to me. You're welcome. Mr. Tracy, you got something to say? Yeah, if, if I might, I won't be okay. in a minute. And, and let me first say, first of all, I have the highest respect for Ron Meredith. He and I have a much, much in common. We both associated with broadcast and broadcast stations. The, he said something that prompted me to stand up, and that was talking about 205. Main Street. He said we made a mistake when we bought that. And, and he suggested we selling it. And it, as you all know, I'm opposed to selling it for the number one reason 
We haven't made a mistake unless we sell it for a loss. And just keep that in mind. If we sell it for a loss, we have disappointed the residents of this county and we we have wasted their money if we did sell it for a loss. I'm hoping that we can do something to make it better and give the county residents their money's worth out of that property. That's my point. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Creasy, we value your opinion. Uh, we respect your opinion. Uh, well, thank you very much. And we're going to, uh, Mayor, if you would come up. If, if, if y'all noticed the city council last week, basically we have taken the armory off the table. The, the, the council voted not to, uh, you know, this commission last month, we asked that the city of Clinton give us a pretty well a concrete proposal as what they would do considering the concerning the armory. And they chose to, uh, I think an overwhelming vote, they chose not to approach that, uh, that topic other than the fact that Rome State is there, they're gonna be there for uh, 25 more months and then possibly roll that over month to month to month. So I think we all realize that the armory is off the table. Uh, so with that being said, Mayor. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Chairman White. Um, and, and real quickly, I wanna kind of reset to, we're having a debate here about 205, whether it was or wasn't a mistake. Um, regardless of what we wanna call it, there were issues and um, there was a recommendation for me from a business standpoint based on inspections, structural engineer, a roof design company doing an assessment um, that there were costs bringing it to standard to where we could go back in there. And those costs are so high that that's how the whole conversation about looking for another facility started taking place. So if you look back at the memorandum of understanding that the county put together with the senior program, the first copy of that MOU was executed. There was an amendment, a second version that was never executed. But in that first one, the one thing that did not change, whether the second version was, was signed or not, the one thing that did not change was that there is an agreement for Anderson County to cover the structure, the HVAC, any issues with 205. That is an agreement that was made with the senior program. The agreement also said that the senior program would cover maintenance, minor repairs, cleaning, paper supplies, basically that it wouldn't be a, a drain on the buildings and grounds, and we have operated that way. They have their own folks, they do their own cleaning, they provide their own supplies. So the county has a commitment. If we do keep 205, then that's where we should go, would be to execute that agreement and bring that building up to standard. But it is going to be far more than 500,000 and that's what I have been trying to share with you all along through the various reports and processes. Uh, we kind of put it all in stop. Uh, we sat down with Catherine, I think we did a two page, uh, Catherine went through and itemized the majors <coughs> and we were gonna go out to RFP for those. But there are other issues associated with that site, such as the slope of the outside. And if you recall when we started looking into, okay, let's, let's bring it up to standard. It would be cheaper to bring it up to standard if we we're gonna use it for something like a garage because then we would not be doing a level of work that required us to come into compliance with today's building code. And, but then when Vicar, John Vickery went in there, he said, I would have less space than I do now because the barrel shape of the roof does, would basically, he'd have to go dead smack center in the building. And he would only have the ability to do one lift. 
because he was excited about that idea. He did go out there. Um, so that's where the discussion came. If you'll recall, I brought um, the committee. I had one architect do a concept design for, well, let's just mow it down. Instead of doing all of this major rehab, let's just mow it down, grade the site, make it level, and build a new facility. So that's how, you know, we ha if we're going to keep it, then let's just trigger that MOU and make the commitment to the seniors. But from a business standpoint, that's what I'm advising you as commission. It is less expensive to get another facility, deal with that problem of 205. That, that's the business perspective. So that's kind of how we got to where we are with a discussion about another location. Uh, and then the other thing is we're paying lease. And so if you look at the proposal that I have before you, instead of paying lease, we're just gonna convert that to paying for an actual facility that we use. And that is something, you know, we all, when we look at, are we gonna rent a home or are we gonna buy a home? Those are things that, that we're looking at. So what I have in front of you, and uh, I did share with you all what I uh, put on operations as well, and I apologize, I didn't have this finished yet for the budget meeting. I wanna share with you where we are. Um, the property uh, consists of a one-story steel frame building, 8,900 square feet, 8,942. Uh, it's, it's zone B2, general business district, and then there's another parcel, that three other acres that's R2, medium density residential. Um, what we have accomplished, we have accomplished the ADA inspection of that facility. Um, Commissioner Denenberg was there. I know she uh, assisted Louise McCowan. Commissioner Creasy was there to help do the measurements. Um, in her report, um, basically the major issues I outlined in um, the agenda packet were van accessible parking spot. Uh, they did look and there is room to put that there. Um, Louise did note that it did seem that some of the doors, the closures were a little bit heavy and that needed to be adjusted. And then if we do occupy that any signs would need to be large, raised print and braille. So uh, we did have that and, and that is in the record. We put that in the minutes for the operations agenda and you have it there in front of you. So that's her report on that. Um, also it was suggested that perhaps some of the regular parking spaces be converted to accessible spaces. Uh, we did have what you all received. We did that, I believe, back in November, an appraisal from a certified MAI appraiser. And that, um, I know that's a restricted use as far as publication, but it did confirm that this is worth far in excess of, of the asking price. Um, then uh, we do have an email in there that's in your packet that is confirmation because there was a deed document that noted um, a transaction price from Faith Promise. And that email is in there uh, confirming that in 2013, when they acquired the assets of the New Life facility, they did not actually have a purchase price established. They were merging their church, so they took on the church's loan. So that's the number that you see um, in that documentation. And the executive pastor of operations, Aaron Goyne, I put that email in there, so you have that in writing. Um, they have put $212,830.75 in building improvements into that facility. And um, in addition, they did acquire the other three acres. And then we did have a building inspection um, by a certified home inspection company. Um, 122 items were inspected, including the grounds, roof, exterior, foundation, attic, roof structure, electrical system, exit signs, outlets, water heater, heating, ventilation, air, kitchen, bathrooms, sinks, interior doors, windows, ceilings, fixtures, floors, handrails. 18 deficiencies were identified. Seven of those are immediate. And you can see there the immediate ones, of course, need to be fixed, but there's nothing 
critical like sewage draining into the street or, or things like of that nature. They are um, a need to install rubber vent boots around the pipes there on the roof. Um, there was an area where some loose wiring was identified in one location that needs to be corrected. Um, there, and I don't know if there was one or two exit signs that are there, but they were not functional, so that would need to be corrected. And if we did proceed, um, I, I put this on the operations committee as well. If we proceeded, I would want to address that with the sellers um, during a 30-day period. What are you going to ask this commission? I have it in your agenda packet. It is the request for, um, there is a fund that's called the Capital Improvement Fund, and I put the Backup Private Act in there that says um, expenditures can be made therefrom by the county executive with the approval of county commission. And so I'm asking for 115000 out of that fund, and then 110000 appropriation from the unassigned fund balance. Uh, the senior program would contribute 25000 from the donations they have raised. They do have pledges or donations uh, in the amount of $43,514, but I do know that they would have some cost and they want to expand the kitchen area. And they could certainly apply any of those funds back if they have overage, which I would expect they did, but I did not want to overcommit on their behalf. So that is what I'm asking. Okay. I also put in there um, a letter from Representative John Reagan who said that he and the Lieutenant Governor are working on acquiring funding. So if you look at that letter, it said they are examining either a grant process through the Commission on Aging or a possible budget amendment request. Um, Representative Reagan said they could certainly pursue the entire amount but they felt like their odds would be better if we asked for a shared amount and that the legislator, legislators tended to, to look favorably on a partnership. So that would be a contribution from the county plus contribution from the senior program themselves, and then the state would contribute. And so what I'm doing is going to finance and asking for uh, the remaining through um, a note and then if the state delivers prior to the issuance of a note, then we don't need a note. And if not, then we, if we've already moved forward, then we use uh, their contributions to uh, pay that off early. Okay, good. I need a motion. I need a motion that we uh, do exactly what the mayor is requesting. to buy the Faith Promise Church, and you saw the payment structure there. Do I have a motion? I, I move that we go ahead with the mayor's proposal. I've got a motion that we accept the mayor's proposal. I need a second. Second. I've got a motion and a second. Discussion, Mr. Fritz. Regardless <clears throat> of uh, what we think about 205 Main Street and everything like that, Okay, uh, we may, uh, we're gonna have to take a loss on it because I mean, regardless of what we uh, do, I mean, in order to get our money back on it, you're gonna have to invest a lot of money fixing that place up to get the, uh, uh, our money back out of it. And there ain't no way we're gonna get uh, our money back unless we do, the, do that. So, I mean, we're just gonna have to come to that realization. Uh, one thing that hasn't been said is fact you knows that uh, with the, uh, 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 the church uh, building we're process uh, they're look, considering buying is that in the equity that we're uh, be obtaining, you're having immediate uh, recouping the loss that we had at uh, uh, 205 Main. Yes. So we're not only so are we recouping our loss immediately by purchasing the, the uh, church in the equity, you're gonna have extra land down there that you could sell and even recoup even the more loss uh, if you wanted to. And then, uh, 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 then if you sold the 205 main and uh, you got that back on the tax road, I mean, there's so much uh, 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 going. Uh, 
the more I thought about it and thought about it, I mean, I, it's, uh, I mean, we're not going to have this laid in our lap again. It's, it's an, in my opinion, it's a no-brainer. So you're in favor of love. I'm, 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 I mean, uh, I'm not finished yet. <laughs> I mean, in the committee, we should be able to talk. And uh, that's what I'm saying, is that uh, uh, this is a no-brainer. And we can't wait. Uh, you know, uh, we were talking about the, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, Representative Reagan and uh, 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 McNally uh, going about uh, this stuff. Well, that's not going to be able to march. We can't wait to march. I mean, when you go out and look at a house, and you and your spouse or whatever, a homeowner, uh, somebody's trying to sell it, they're not going to hold a home for you to wait and see if you want to, uh, two or three months later, if you're going to still buy it. If somebody comes along, they're going to sell it. This is a golden opportunity for us to uh, uh, recoup our loss and get the seniors a uh, uh, golden opportunity to uh, some place to meet and the county come out ahead finally. And I think uh, this is, again, is, in my opinion, is a no-brainer, and it's time to move forward with this, and let's uh, put this to uh, bed. I wasn't trying to cut you short. And what I was trying to get to the point was, when we start repeating what Mr. Meredith said and what Ms. Mer uh, Ms. Frank says, then Mr. Bob. Thank you, Chuck. I've, I've certainly had some questions about Mariner Point, and... Um, Mr. Meredith has done a good job, I think, of addressing to some of those questions. I, I still have a concern about the traffic, and I would like to think about that again. And I'd like to know a little bit more about where our seniors are coming from currently. Um, I, but I feel that this should go to the full commission for consideration. Sure. And, I, and I want to talk about 205. Um, We've been on, we bid twice on it, have Mom, we? let me address that. Regardless of what this, commi what this committee does, it'll go to full commission for the full vote. We can either vote to accept it. Okay. We can vote to uh, vote no, or we can vote to pass it to full commission without a recommendation. Gotcha. So whatever we do here today, it'll go to the full commission. Good. That's my understanding. Yeah. So with that being said, proceed. Okay, I appreciate that clarification. In terms of 205, we've, we've bid twice, have we been out on bid on it? Or at least, you know, I, I think we should sell 205. I think 300,000 is probably the best we're going to get for it. And it goes back on the tax roll as the point has been made. Um, I, don't, I, I just don't think we're going to do any better. So that's Good why, point. okay. Good point. If I, I could address this traffic concern. Um, at the last meeting, I believe, or one of the meetings, uh, some citizens raised that concern, and I did go meet um, with the city and discuss the traffic. Apparently, they had been denied a signal there in the past, and they did commit that they would be willing to go back to TDOT uh, with another request, and that they would look to partner with the county on that. So if that does happen, they are willing to do that. One last point, I, yes, sir. I, I do, I appreciate that, and I'm comfortable with the mayor's financing recommendation. Any other comment, Ms. Fair, Ms. Steve? Sorry. I've got a split in the head. Part of my head's wanting to go that way, and part of it's going, and I'm, if I'm short, I'm sorry. It's just, uh, go ahead. I'll, I'll keep it brief. Talk. Don't want to hurt your head. I, too, want the seniors to have a very nice facility and I want them to have it as soon as possible because we've been after this topic for far longer than I think we should. I just don't feel that what we have been presented have been adequate facilities to this point. <clears throat> and I too, like my compadre to my right, I wasn't sitting here when the building was purchased, I was sitting out there actually, the night that it happened. And I remember it vividly and I remember gasping when it all happened. With that said, my reluctance is one location. I still can't get past that. I think that there has to be a better location for our seniors to, to have a nice facility. And I also question having gone through the building, 
whether it's going to be adequate in size for any length of time, especially after the kitchen is renovated. That's going to take up a pretty good amount of space because right now, I've, quite frankly, I stretched my hands out in the kitchen and I think my hands touched wall to wall, um, if not pretty darn close. So there's going to be another expense of renovating a kitchen. And if anybody's ever done any renovations in your home, what's the most expensive room to renovate? The kitchen. Um, I'll leave it at that. Mr. Chairman, um, on the size issue, <clears throat> um, when we were first looking at this, I think I have a letter here where I write, wrote, um, Representative Reagan had asked me to put in writing a request for funding when we were looking at um, constructing a senior program. And I was basing um, that square footage cost <coughs> off of the Carnes Senior Center. Mm -hmm. And their senior center is, uh, their RFP was for 8,000 square feet. So their completed size was 7,950 square feet. Um, to serve it serve about 418 occupants and they shared with me um, Some of their lessons learned for instance um, Some ADA issues uh, Some rain protection cupboards are not enough, you know some of those things so we did kind of walk through that but I, I did watch the City Council meeting and one of the things I did share with the city manager after the meeting the property we are looking at is, um, you know, in a great area. It's a demand area, and there is no reason that there are grants out there for facilities, and there is no reason. Um, what's the one senior center where they got in northeast Tennessee a, a huge grant for a completely new facility? Um, Was it Clark County? Um, there is no reason that the county could not, you know, work towards that and then ultimately sell this facility. Um, the Faith Promise Church has not asked for a reversion clause to be in the deed. Um, so there is no reason that we couldn't do that. Um, commission ultimately, at the end of the day, controls wherever we occupy. So if it were something where there was an interest in that location, we could still be marching towards looking at, at something else um, in a better location. But I'm advocating for seizing on this opportunity because it is well below the appraised value, well, well below the appraised value. It solves the problem, we stop paying lease, and we own an asset that, that you know, is in good condition. Any other discussion? One, one real quick question, and then I'll go to Mr. Meredith. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you could provide the information, the numbers, in a text message, email, whatever, okay. I would really appreciate that as well. Can I, can, can I ask her something else that she asked? Please. You talked about that we've just brought one building. We formed a committee years ago to find uh, facilities. Oh, no, I know you've brought more than one building. And <laughs> we've this building and then the building up... Uh, up at the interstate, the uh, church that was up there, yeah. 8,000 square feet, uh, the armory. This is not, it's been, I don't know where we put it. I don't know any property that is out there available. Um, so I just, there have been a lot of people outside of the committees that have went and looked and tried to find an adequate place. So I just wanted to bring that to you. Okay. Yes, I'll see thank, you there. Thank you very thank, much. Thank you. Just, just real quick. Uh, we looked at a building that was in my district, yes. and it, it was a church building also. There were commissioners that said they wouldn't vote for that because it was too far from their district. This is the same issue that I'm having now, is it's way too far from my district. It's too far from the Rocky Top district. It, it's a long ways. I've had, I've had numerous seniors call me and tell me that it was too far for them to drive that they would go to halls before they drove down there because they have to come through clinton and all the red lights that's that's my first problem but i mean i i don't i don't have a i don't have a 
recommendation of a building setting out here that that would be better suited as far as location. But I, before I vote yes on this, I'm going to need something concrete about grants or, or something from, from Representative Reagan. This just says that he's committed to pursuing finding for the Anderson County Senior Program. He's, he's committed to finding. And, and that's, not, that's not a guarantee. Someone said something about if you, if you find a house, you gotta buy it, but you gotta secure your funding first, and you gotta know where it's coming from first. And if, if I'm buying a house, I, I don't have an either or for funding. It's, it's gotta be 100%. So for me, we've got to pursue it either with, with loans or we've got to pursue it with this, but not both. We've got to make our mind up, and, and when we do that, then I, I'll consider voting for it. But as of right now, I just can't. Well, and I think, I think in making our, in, in, in making our, uh, our mind up, the armory has been taken off the table. I understand that. That's, so we're down to this building here, and we're going to have two more speakers and then we're going to vote. Mr. Shanks. Is that right, Mr. Chairman? Oh, I'm sorry. Jerry wants to speak and I'll jump in. <coughs> and I apologize for coming back up, but there were a couple of comments made that prompted me to get up again. Uh, one was the comments about the city of Clinton City Council tabling the armory I watched that meeting on a replay of that meeting and I had an impression that they were putting it on hold until they had a more definite date mm -hmm. than what the exactly. Roan County or Roan State was going to do. Exactly. And they wanted to hold up in case it may be holding us up for doing other things. Good point. And I, I also was very impressed that they're wanting to partner with Anderson County. And they stressed that, numerous council members stressed that point. They want to partner with Anderson County to provide the seniors with a good facility. That comment was made a couple of times by council and I wanted to put that on there. The other point was made by another speaker that selling the building again. And I want to emphasize my point again once more. I also, I'll vote to sell the building, but not for less than we paid. My point there is that we're going to let the citizens down if we sell it for less. And I just cannot pull myself to pull a lever to, to do that. And that was the comments I wanted to answer. And thank you, th thank you for your comments, but now, you know Tim Isabel is working on a plan with the mayor to, to sell the building and collect greater uh, uh, sales tax. There's a plan in place, I believe, if, if, it was a, if it's a I'm, perfect I'm world. I'm with the plan, okay. I mean, but I'm still Understand. on this point. I will Understand. not vote to sell it for less. All right, thank you, sir. Mr. Shane. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, one of the hesitations I had about purchasing Mariner Point was the fact that the armory was still on the table. Now that the armory has been at least temporarily removed from the table, I am certainly leaning toward the Mariner Point purchase. Seems like whenever we talk about a new building for the Senior Center, uh, <coughs> the topic of the purchase of 205 Main always seems to come up, and I understand that. Uh, a couple of us sitting up here today were not on commission when that purchase was made. Well, I'm not ashamed to say, and I was on commission when that purchase was made, and I don't care to tell you why I made the vote to purchase that building. The seniors needed the building. Everybody agrees with that. I don't think anybody up here disagrees the seniors need another building. What rang in my ears is when it was stated that we could actually use 205 Main to host events that the senior center could generate revenue, that was a selling point to me. Um, I understand some things happened and maybe that wasn't uh, turned out to be so. And then of course we found the maintenance issues, but I guess one of the first questions I would have, Mayor, is if we purchase Mariner Point, 
would we be able to have events and possibly generate revenue for the senior center that way? Um, well, I guess it's something we could definitely look at. I hadn't even looked at or I hadn't even thought about that. Okay. I did think about commission meetings. Um, in fact, there is a um, or a public meeting space you know, for commissioners or public hearing because they do have a media mm -hmm. stand there. Yep. And I even talked to Roger. I said, Roger, we could construct something that could go along the wall and you roll, you roll out basically what would be this during meeting times. But I have not thought about events, but okay. that is definitely, I, I don't see why it couldn't serve as a community center of sorts. Okay. If that could be a consideration, I think that would certainly uh, sway some opinions also. Um, other issues that we've discussed on the Mariner Point side, and, and I, I would certainly yield to Commissioner Meredith or Commissioner Jameson on this, I've always made it a big issue of listening to the people of the district whenever an issue comes up. Um, I think in a few of the meetings we've had before, there had been some uh, constituents that maybe had voiced some concerns about this location. I expect every commissioner to vote based on their constituents' opinions, because that's certainly what I try to do. I'm not going to get mad at any commissioner for voting the way they feel their constituents want them to vote, whether it's, it's for a motion I have or against it. Uh, as far as selling 205 Main, I don't have a problem with selling 205 Main, especially if we can start generating some revenue back from it. If we decide not to sell 205 Main and we decide we're going to keep it, with the understanding that it's going to cost another three, four, five hundred thousand dollars to bring it up to par of whatever uh, need we, we see fit for it, then are we going to tell the seniors, okay, now that's your only option that you've got. We've renovated this building. You're either going to go there or you're not going to go anywhere. No, I'm not going to support that. That That is not a direction I want to go in, nor would I suggest it for anyone. Uh, if we decide to keep it and use it for another purpose, I would certainly be interested to hear what the other purpose may be. We've already heard that it's not going to work well for a garage. It's not going to work well for a motor pool. Regardless, if we did renovate it and able to use it for something else, I'm going to put Roger on the spot, how long would that take to get 205 Main move-in ready? Roger, your best guessman. I won't hold you to it. I miss Roger's I understand. And you may be talking about what a year or two down the line before all that construction was completed, in addition to the cost. And I'm using that to compare it to Mariner Point. If you know, Mayor, how long with the renovations we need to do with Mariner Point for the seniors to move in, how long would it take for us to get move in ready? I would guess, I mean, I think the it just depends on what they want to do with the kitchen. I mean, there is a functioning kitchen now. I mean, you've been and mm -hmm. helped at their facility. You've seen the kitchen is pretty mm -hmm. small. It's really about the same size. So, I mean, they could move in as it is, but we would like to go ahead and, um, I, I'm not a construction person, so oh, I don't know what the name of that building is, but there are no, there are no walls that are foundational walls on the interior. They're designed so that you can move the walls around. So it wouldn't okay. be, we did have a light discussion about that on one of the tours. It would be a relatively easy in the construction sense to move that wall. Okay. And I, like you said, you did have this on the agenda for the operations committee meeting. Are, are you asking both budget and operations to do the same thing or budget's got a different function? Well, uh, in budget, I'm <laughs> specifically requesting those appropriations okay. um, to uh, Commissioner Waddell's point about um, Representative Reagan and, and Governor McNally's willingness to work for funding, I don't want to base anything on a wish. So that's why I'm asking Finance Committee to authorize okay. a note for 250000 and that would be paid for by reducing the senior budget by $18,000 a year and applying that 18000 to um, the note. Okay. And that is... The safety net, that's not me promising something that's not going to materialize. That's a way to fund it. And then if McNally, uh, Governor McNally and Representative Reagan deliver, 
then we don't have to borrow if, if they get it done by April or, or mid-April. Um, we don't have to borrow or we use it to pay the note off. But it's not over-promising. And the reason uh, that Representative Reagan has to write the letter that way is he can't speak for the entire legislature until the vote actually goes down. But he put something in writing so that you all know and you see that he has put in writing that he is committed to doing that. He feels optimistic, but he can't, sure. he can't make that promise. I understand. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ron and I had a great conversation this afternoon on many fronts. Some I'll divulge, some I won't. I've lived in Mariner Point since 1994 before the grocery store was out there and all the growth that you see. But I think this is the first time, as I shared with Ron, when it made the front page of the Oak Ridger that basically commission didn't help the seniors. That's when I really got the most calls out of my subdivision as well as other subdivisions close by. Some are just against it. They won't tell me why. But as Ron pointed out, the traffic is a concern. I was actually on the committee in Mariner Point about the traffic lot before Ron moved in as we were gaining houses up to about 340 right now. The biggest thing TDOT told us is because it's a three-way stop. But I think technology now could done that. As I shared with Ron, there's not been a traffic study done since that one. <clears throat> but that's when Representative Caldwell was in office from Oak Ridge and he helped us actually get those studies. We didn't believe that, so we, he convinced TDOT to physically put people out there. But I'd say 10 years ago, as Ron and I talked, maybe 290, 280 houses, um, and we got more coming out of the ground down there. So the constituents that I can't speak for, Commissioner Jameson, I know he gets calls too, but those are the two concerns. I just don't want it, and I just the traffic. That's the two things, and it's hard for me to vote on this location. And I shared that with Ron today because I do live, not that it doesn't bother me, but it bo apparently it bothers the majority of the subdivision, which Ron and I, I think we're talking some of the same people. We don't know if we're getting the same. But anyhow, we'll leave it at that. But on this inspection, this roof issue that's in this expense, it would concern me. This roof is 17 years old, and it states substandard repair on the roof could lead to a leak. If it's a metal roof, which I assume it is, it's a metal building, those screws are missing and they're put down with tar. You could have, they're usually 20 to 25 year life period. So I think you should consider repairing that, not substandard. Most inspectors are just gonna say, well, is it leaking, it's a metal roof, and, and it, obviously they're concerned about it. So I, I think you could see a substantial amount of money to repair it and or replace it soon. Just my experience working where I used to work. But if this were another location, I think someone said there's not locations. I do think there are locations. I don't know that it's subpar or par for what seniors are wanting. But I personally think it needs to be in town to Commissioner Waddell's part. I can't speak for his district, but I think it needs to be not on one end of the Clinton city limits or the other. I think it should be right here. I mean, we're probably five miles from the Oak Ridge Senior Center from this location, five to six. So someone asked where are the constituents coming from. I think that's, that's a, we should know that and whether they would drive. But I, I would commend the mayor. I do like the way she's put together the half million dollars. Uh, I would not put a lot of faith in the budget amendment from the legislature, I think it would be more of a grant from the Office of Aging because if one senior center gets a budget amendment, there's going to be a lot of senior centers calling an amendment too. It's just my experience being working down there. So I plan to vote no. I, I'm for another location. I'm actually for improving 205 Main. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. That's for another argument another day. But uh, I, I do would, I would like to ask the chair if, if this motion fails, I thought it would not go to commission for approval. 
as our committee, it would either come back to this committee or we'd start over. But I would yield to our parliamentarian that's in the audience <laughs> on that call. Well, I That's kind of what I thought, but just not trying to correct the chair, just a clarification, Mr. Chair. And I appreciate that, but it's my understanding that as long as it comes before the budget, he can go to the uh, commission anyway with lesser vote. That's my understanding. I, I question you on that, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I agree with the parliamentarian, and I believe we've done it that way in the past, that if the motion is brought before the budget, the motion's on the floor, and the motion fails, it dies unless it's brought up again. Listen, two, two, two months ago, we voted not to buy Mariner's Point. The whole commission voted not to buy it. Mm -hmm. Now we're sitting right here again, talking about it again. So don't, don't, don't tell me that we can't do this. We do it all the time. And I, we do it all the time. We vote one month to do something, and then the next month, Mr. McCamey. Very good, very good. Am I right? You're correct, sir. <laughs> you are correct. Our rules state that it just has to go to the budget committee. It doesn't have to have any recommendation for it, against it, or you know, send it without a recommendation. Uh, we do that quite often. Things get sent to the full commission without a recommendation. So y'all didn't approve it. You just approved sending it to the full commission. And basically that's all I'm asking for today is that you send it back to, to the commission. I would love to have a recommendation that that we go ahead with the mayor's funding plan there's a couple of other options and I'll not bring those up at this point but there's a couple of other options that uh, are available and I know I've argued against what Commissioner Waddell says about 205 South Main that the two shouldn't be tied together but let me tell you something if we take any less than what we paid for the building, we're gonna to have to appropriate money to go with it to pay off the note. Because that $1.4 million note was to purchase a building and renovate an existing building. The 600,000, 650,000 we paid for 205 South Main, that note will have to be paid off before we can sell it. So if we were to take the 300,000 that's been offered, we'd still have to come up with about 300,000 to pay it off because we still owe on it. So that, that does tie the two together if we want to sell the building. If we have a like building, a like purchase, we can transfer that and say, okay, that 600,000 that we borrowed on the 1.4, is applying to 96 Mariner Point Drive now instead of 205 South Main, and that frees 205 South Main to be sold at any price we want to. But if we don't have a like purchase to put in there, then we have to pay that note off before we can sell 205 South Main. Mm. And another item that I want to point out, I don't know how many fishermen we've got in here, but you never hear people talk about what they've caught, what they've got on their walls. Most of the time, you'll hear them talk about the one that got away, that big one that got away. And I'm telling you right now, if we don't purchase 205 South Main, it's going to get away. And this commission will be talking about it for years to come. We've done purchase 205 South Main. I mean, 96 Mariner Point. <laughs> I'm right. thinking, boy, my head is gone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, if we don't purchase this building now and it gets away, it's something we'll be talking about for many years to come. And I, I just want to leave that with you all. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Can Mr. Mayor. I have a question for Mr. McCamey. Mr. McCamey, please. <clears throat> Commissioner McCamey, if you're doing your math right and the note transfers, you hypothetically, we paid 300000 you paid six. So 300,000 would fall to 96 Mariner Point and we're paying five, so now we're at eight. Is that what you, to clarify what you said? So now we're at 800,000? No, I, what I'm saying is if we, if we sell Mariner Point, I mean, if we sell 205 right. South Main. For 300, just round for th numbers. 300,000. We owe about 
350. I, I think it was another yeah. 250, 300,000. So right. we're, we're going to have to appropriate 250,000 to go with that 300,000 and pay that note off. We can't, we can't sell the building until that note's paid off. But you, you, your comment was that the note, you could, if it's the same use, it could transfer over to 96 Mariner Point Drive. Yes. Okay. So as long as it's worth 600000 or whatever the note was. Okay. But back to my original, we got it. We still have three. You're adding to 96. We're asking for half. That makes 800000 for the purchase. That's correct. It's five for the purchase and three what we owed at 205. I'm just trying to understand what you're saying, but I'm going to no, go if to we, lobby. We don't have to. We can do whatever we want to do with 205 South Main. If we have a like purchase, correct, and and we're only asking for what two hundred fifty thousand uh, for the note. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to understand what you're saying, but the way I'm taking it is, you're taking the note to free up to sell one and putting it on another because it's the like use. I, I didn't think you could do it. No, no. That this way. is a this this two hundred fifty would be an additional note that would be on on that property. I still think the math's 800,000. I, I would yield to the finance people. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let's vote. Let's do it. We've got a motion on the floor to purchase, to purchase Faith Promise Church. The mayor's got the, uh, the financial arrangement here. We all know it. We've heard uh, uh, when I asked Mr. Meredith to speak, I thought this would last about 15 minutes. Uh, and I'm, it's just, uh, but I appreciate everybody's comments. Just clarification on what you're voting on. You're not voting on a purchase. You're voting because I have that going through a contract and then in the finance, you're, you've got two, a budget amendment in front of you. So. But if we vote to appropriate that this. Only, that's only part of the puzzle. So it still would require finance, and then it would require operations for a, for a purchase contract. So yes. But just for, for your motion purposes, it's, it's this, the transfers, it's coming out of the capital improvement fund, the 115. That's what you're voting on today. Robbie, tell me how the motion are to read. Yes. We're voting to increase 225 and decrease 225. Yes, out of 101. Transfers out, and then we're, sorry. We're, moving, we're increasing 171, social, cultural, and recreation. 225. 225,000. And, and then, and then I've, I've got a note there in the justification that if if this happens, then we're committing to you know submitting a budget request for eighteen thousand dollars less a year that would be moved from lease. So we're putting budget committee on notice that we would reduce that, and that the senior program would contribute twenty five thousand dollars towards that okay, purchase. Noted. So Robbie, t tell me how the tell me how the motion are to read. Well, the motion is just like when we do a budget. All right. Does everybody understand we're going to vote on the budget? Yes, sir. We're going to a, a yes vote will mean we're going to uh, we're going to approve the amendment. A no vote means we don't approve the amendment. Am I correct? So, with that being said, all in favor of approving the amendment number uh, seventeen. That's page on uh, page on forty nine and forty nine. All in favor of approving that amendment, yes? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, three? Show of hands. All in favor of approving the amendment, vote yes. Uh, show of hands. Three? All in favor. All that uh, uh, show a, a vote of no means we don't approve of the appropriation. Raise your hand. A vote of no. We got one, two, three. <laughs> yeah. 
motion fails. I'd love to have a glass of water. Thank you. Well, I can't see Thank you. Mr. Chairman, in a yeah, in a tie vote, the the chairman would vote. I'm gonna take some dope. <laughs> <laughs> As a rule, I don't vote on anything, but does the, does the board want me to vote? Why don't you vote? I would assume you would, Mr. Chair. I assumed you would. Then I'll vote yes. So motion carries. <laughs> Mr. Robbie. <laughs> if you would start us off, please. Yes. Mr. Meredith, I thank you for coming. Thank you. Appreciate everybody that uh, had the patience to uh, work with us on that. Mr. Meredith is uh, going to, you're uh, an ASAP participant? I am an ASAP participant. So if you want to vote And Ms. Well, wait a minute. Mr. Meredith is an ASAP participant, and Ms. Uh, Ms. Regina back here is an ASAP. Is anybody else in here? Well, good luck to both of you, okay? If you'd like to, we're selling plaques for the senior center. <laughs> little, the little gold, the little copper plaques, maybe, or a hundred bucks for a year if you guys like to help anybody would just see me or any other other members. All right, thank you, sir. Mr. Holbrook, please. Just getting to the passion fund balance report really quick. Pretty much the same as the, as last month. Our unassigned fund balance is $4.7 million. Our total fund balance is $8.8 .8 million and cash is $11,102,210, which is up $2.4 million from last year at this time. Any questions on the cash Any and questions? fund balance report? Proceed, please. Okay. Next up, I have the sales tax report. I was able to report out on this in the last commission meeting because we got it in that day, but December was a big month. It was our biggest month ever. $3.5 million total sales tax, and the counties actually was up 538,855, which was a very large number, and we did check with the Department of Revenue, and it's legit. So um, that's, hopefully we'll see more of that to come. I think this is the first month that we saw some internet sales tax. That's how it was reported and explained from the Department of Revenue. So hopefully next month we'll see an increase also and continue to see increases. Are there any way to break that down, uh, internet sales tax? Are there any way to? Well, when we, when we look at the report, and Regina can explain this more because it comes to the trustee from the state, but it shows like where the purchases were made. There was a lot of Amazon on there this month, last month, and stuff like that that were online purchases. Okay. okay. Mr. Chairman, okay. isn't that the number that Mr. Meredith, Ron Meredith, was just giving us a 400 and some odd thousand dollars? I think he, I what he gave him is, and I gave Commissioner Isabel this, is from last year at this time, from July to December, we're probably up 400,000, or July. 417,724. Yes, I don't have those numbers in front of me, and I tried to look at the email I sent Commissioner Isabel, but I couldn't find it. But we are up from last year, and our, our sales tax is trending up, and it trended up last year, and it's continuing to trend that way. I know I contribute to it a lot. Right, and, but unless we collect it in Anderson County, we don't, the county doesn't benefit from sales tax. Now, I shouldn't say that. The schools benefit, but the general fund does not. So. Regina, you got anything to add to that? No, I was just agreeing. Okay. We get a list that tells like how much, you know, from Amazon and the different places that we ordered out in the county. So. Okay. And they said it was, when I talked to the Department of Revenue, they said um, November and December is really when it, um, they, they got real specific on the locations. So we should, I feel like, see another Okay, thank you. Proceed, Mr. Holbrook. Okay, and the next item before we get to the budget amendments is the summary financial statement for EMS that I'm required to do each month. They've collected collected 62% of their budget, of their revenues, 
from January and their expenditures are at 56 percent which they're right on the, they're, they're sticking pretty close to where they should be yeah, so good. thank you if there's no questions I'll get any them. questions all right let's start with our budget committee now yes consent agenda the transfers not requiring commission approval are 1 through 19 looking for approval as a group Got a motion? Need a second. Second. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right. The next up are the transfers and appropriations from the school department, numbers 20 through 24. Motion. Got a second. Second. Ms. Minton, you got anything to say on those? No. All right. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. All right. Health Department, Charles Turner. Yes. Is okay. Charles Turner here? He is. I don't know. I, I, I have trouble recognizing you. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just glad yeah, to know what you look like. I, I see you sometimes, but sometimes I don't recognize you. Go ahead, Robbie. Commission. From the Health Department, appropriations 25 through 27. Second. I'd be happy to explain any of them if you... Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. All right, next up we have the county clerk's office, appropriations 28 and 29. Motion. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Got a motion to approve. Need a second? Second. Got a motion and a second. Discussion on Jeff Coles? All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. The next appropriations, 30 through 33, are from the library board. Looking for approval as a group. What's that woman's name? M Susan Maselli. McKelly? Maselli. Maselli. Is she here? She's not, but I am. <laughs> okay. I just want to see what Susan Maselli looked like. Okay. <laughs> motion to approve. Got a motion. Need a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. All right, next up we have an appropriation from the Parks Department. It's just increasing revenue that they received from Got a motion. Supply. Second. Discussion? Is Ben Taylor here? Right. Okay, I'd want to see what you look like. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries, thank you. Yeah. Okay, next up is an appropriation from... Steve Payne. Yes, emergency management, sorry. Got lost there for a second. Need a motion. Motion approved. Got a motion, second. Second. Got a motion to second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Number 36 is from our IT department. It was an emergency purchase totaling $18,000 that we're getting out of courthouse security. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Got a motion to approve. Brian, you want to say anything on that in discussion? I got a question. Ask me. Go ahead and ask him. Brian, eighteen thousand dollars seems like a whole lot of money for a video conference. I mean, you can do that with two iPhones now, or or, or anything. Uh, you just see eighteen. I mean, is that that you, you've looked three. this over and you you, yeah. you think you, this is the right way to go, huh? Yes, sir. We there's three devices being replaced, not just one. Okay. It's a it's a system in itself. There's four units. Uh, the judges all have one. Uh, the unit that burn out, they're, they're completely not available. The, uh, they were purchased, what I'm asked, uh, guesstimating is around 24 years ago. The modems on them are 33.6 speed. 33.6 uh, was before you all started using AOL. So that would have been more than likely mid 90s for the uh, equipment that's there. The uh, Rex approached me about it. We looked at the equipment. We brought it to our room, went through it. It is definitely burnt out. Um, there are no sources to purchase that exact device, uh, but working with our vendors in Central Knox, we, uh, we spent several days trying to find the appropriate device, tossing different ones back and forth, Thank and that's you. what we settled with. So this is for video arraignment, correct? Yes, sir. They've, they've just been doing that maybe 10 years now, right? It's not been that long. It's not been very, I mean, it, it's not been that long. So did we just find this equipment somewhere else? Do I'm not know? sure where that was from. It I, When I came here, it was here, sir. Uh, it's been on those benches since the day I started. It's not been up there very long is what I'm getting at. 
So I don't know where the 24 years comes from. The 24 it's, years is the age of the equipment. Okay. My understanding that it's, they've been using it for about 15 years. It's, it's, they've not been doing video arraignment, but That's for less than, because they never did that at the, at the I jail. The monitors, we got to tore up. <laughs> right. I that replaces that. So this is an emergency. Well, that's, that's what I'm being, you know, that comes to me as an emergency from the judges, and I'm not going to argue that with the judge. It just, it just seems like a lot of money for something that, like I said, you, you can do with a couple of iPhones. Yes, sir. You know. No, you could do I mean, the my, Logitech. My son will be FaceTiming me, you know, in, on my way home. So yes. I just, just $15,000 seems like a lot of money, guys. 18000 I'm sorry. 18000 there's uh, just to let you know in that also, the uh, the bench equipment that runs that equipment, uh, basically it has a lot of issues as well. So Rex would like to move forward with getting that replaced. The monitors that are hooked to it, Shane over at the jail, those need to be replaced as well. The, I talked to Justin and, and his crew, and they said the same thing. It's it's falling apart, from what I understand. This is your recommendation. So yes, sir. And and this and this will cover all of that. This covers it all. It's got all the equipment is in it. All the monitors, all of the things that are needed to revamp that system into a new state of the art. That's why we okay. pay you to lead us through this. Thank you. I got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Solid waste. Uh, next appropriations from Jeff DeBall on solid waste, decreasing restricted for public health and welfare and increasing engine. Got a motion? Second. Got a motion to second. Second. Got a motion to second. Discussion? Discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, motion carries. Okay, the next item is from ACTV. Increasing motor vehicles, 718, 51,000, and decreasing their committed for social cultural, 51,000. They're wanting to buy two vehicles. And I attached the minutes from their committee where it was approved in their November meeting. Just. Got a motion? Need a second. Motion and a second. Discussion? Mr. Chang. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I apologize if this is out of order. I'm not really asking about this purchase. I'm asking Andy or someone who could answer the question. I noticed in the minutes that we were provided that the Comcast representative was not present. In the past, we have discussed the possibility of a Comcast representative being back on that committee. Do we have an update on that? I don't know if that's something you can answer, Andy, or if I need to direct it to someone else. I understand. If any Comcast representatives are watching, I'd respectfully request that they start attending these committee meetings. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. All in favor of the motion? Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, next up, we have a circuit court clerk, Rex Lynch, with two appropriations number 39 and 40 transfer and appropriation. got a motion need a second second got a motion to second discussion yeah. just go through it uh, yes. yes it did yeah. any more discussion any more questions all in favor say aye uh, motion carries thank you 41 40 through 45 are transfers and appropriations from the finance department. The first one I'd like to explain the ESG contract is getting ready to be executed. And once we do, we owe 10% of the total. So we are borrowing the money from unassigned, but once we get the bond is we, you know, execute the bond, we'll be paying that money back to unassigned fund balance, which will be in May around May. I would say, I think it's when they let us to believe that it will be Scott. That's has, pretty so. standard, Robbie. Yes. Can we take 41 and 42 individually? Yes. Perfect. Well, no, they're the same exact. They're the same. Uh, okay. It's just moving the money from general fund to the, we have to do it that way to get it to the capital improvement fund. Is that all your explanation? Yes. I need a motion. Mr. Chairman, it's 
called a mobilization. That's part of the contract. It's a mobilization. That's ten percent. is a mobilization of the contract. Yes. Yeah. Got a motion that we approve. Second. Second. Discussion. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Motion carries. No. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion carries. Thank you. You want me to do all mine separate, or do you want to vote on any of them? The 43 through 45. Anything, any surprises in there? Not really. We want to take them, we want to vote on these three. Second. Second. Uh, group. That's it. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Or any opposed? Motion carries. Number 46 is from the Sheriff Department. Sheriff Barker, it's a transfer major line item from the HR Department. They're taking over the badge system, the Sheriff, is, and they're moving the money to the Sheriff's budget to pay for the badge system so he can control the budget as well Tell as me the what project. what that means, Robbie, taking over the badge system. Well, the first part of the project, when, when we decided to do the, get the, bat, the money for the badge project, Kim, Miss Whitaker in the HR Department was, the money was put in the HR budget. Yes. But, at that time, Sheriff Barker was also appointed um, project, project director over the badge system. Okay. So now they want to control. He has taken over the the badge system has been is ready to be taken over by the sheriff's department, and I think they are taking over that they want to take over the budget as well. So, okay, we're moving the money to their to their fund. Then I need a motion. Motion. So moved. I got a motion to approve. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Number 47, it is a appropriation from the buildings and grounds. They're decreasing two codes, $2,500 and $2,400, and decreasing asking for money out of unassigned fund balance, $7,400 to increase their utility codes. They actually put this in the budget in this year, in the current year's budget, but when we deferred back to last year's budget, it got taken out, so they're, they have to have this to pay the utility bills. Need a motion. Is that just a... Yes, sir. I'll, I'll move. I'll that. We got a motion to approve. Second. second. Got a second. Discussion? Uh, was that just a clerical thing? No, 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 not at all. It, when the budget committee took everybody's budget to last to 18-19, that all those increases were taken out so they th we've had several departments that have had to increase their budget to get to where they needed to be this year throughout different months of the year and with different budget amendments but this is just the buildings department increasing their utilities to get where they need to be to pay them for the rest of the year Thank you. any other discussion all in favor say aye, aye. aye. any opposed motion carries thank you Okay, number 48 is also from the health department. It's actually a health department finance. It's more of a finance department, but we're increasing their tobacco grant and decreasing unassigned. Last year, the tobacco money rolled into the unassigned fund balance instead of being put in their reserve, and it was, a, it was an error from the finance department, so we're just asking that they, they have to have this money to, you know, it goes with a grant, so. Second. I got a motion and a second discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, motion carries. And we've done address the seniors. Right? Yes. Oh, yeah. What you got left, Mr. Robin? I'm finished. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate everybody.